Hi, I'm Carissa Vacker, and welcome back to Sleep Wave, a podcast where we let waves of relaxation wash over you through original sleep meditations and hypnosis created to help you fall asleep tonight. And don't worry if you don't hear the end of an episode. I encourage you to drift off whenever you're ready. Before we get started on tonight's episode, I'd like to say thanks again for all of the great ratings and reviews you guys have left us on Apple Podcasts and some of the other networks too. We love hearing how your sleep has improved and how it helps the rest of your life flow more smoothly too. So if you too find that sleep has come easier since listening to Sleep Wave and you've not yet reached out to us, please feel free to let us know via the reviews on Apple Podcasts. We read them every day, and your ratings and reviews help us reach even more people who need a little help with their sleep right now. One of my friends takes tremendous pride in keeping her whole bedroom space neat, orderly, and as luxurious as she can. She puts fresh flowers and vases on her bedside tables. The lighting in the room is low and glowing. There is no TV in her room, and she always keeps the bed neatly made with linens and lots of pillows that feel cozy and inviting to her. We were fresh out of college when she first started making her bedroom an especially cozy space, and most of our friends, myself included, had bedrooms that were anything but relaxing. I loved that she didn't spend a lot of money creating a calming space for herself, but used simple things to create a true retreat. Whenever I'd be over at her place hanging out and I'd pass by her room, I always felt inspired to make my own bedroom tidier and more calming. She felt creating a space that invoked relaxation from the moment she entered it would help her rest better and enjoy her time at home more. Since I've followed suit, I can say that I truly agree. This was especially helpful a few years ago when my husband Billy was going to Bali for three weeks to teach a yoga retreat. I ended up having a work opportunity come up and chose not to go. It was a really tough decision at the time, and even though I made the choice myself, I was feeling pretty bummed about it. While our small LA apartment was a far cry from the rainforests and beaches of Bali, the effort I'd made in making the space soothing and cozy helped me to create a little retreat for myself, even when I couldn't get away. While Billy was on his trip, I made an effort to give myself a little extra care at home. I ordered out my favorite meals or met up with friends for evenings out. I went hiking on new trails and explored parts of the city I rarely went to. I slept in when I could and spent more time writing and reflecting before bed. I kept my home a little cleaner and more orderly, and I bought myself fresh flowers too. These little acts of self-care made a difference in how I felt about my space and let me breathe a sigh of relief each time I walked through the door. Whether you're off enjoying travel with family and friends or staying at home this summer, I hope you're finding peace and retreat wherever you are. Tonight, we're going to go on a visualization meditation to Bali together, sinking into peace, beauty, and coziness from where we are right in this moment. This is A Sleepy Sanctuary in Bali by Billy Gill. The Indonesian archipelago is the largest island chain in the world, made up of over 17,000 islands in total, of which about 6,000 are inhabited. Bounded by the Indian and Pacific Oceans, these islands are home to a rich cultural history and living tradition. It was a valuable region for trade since at least the 7th century. Cultural influences from mainland China and the Indian subcontinent allowed Buddhist and Hindu kingdoms to flourish in the region, and Sunni traders, along with Sufi scholars, 
brought Islam to what would come to be known as Indonesia. Missionaries from Europe spread Christianity to these islands, and a long history of colonization and rebellion have culminated in what is now the Indonesian Republic. Thousands of distinct ethnic and linguistic groups have come together under the motto, Many, Yet One. While Indonesia is the most populous Muslim-majority country, one island has continued to practice Hinduism since around the first century AD. Influenced heavily by Indian culture, Hindu beliefs were integrated with local beliefs, giving birth to the distinct form of Balinese Hinduism, which is practiced by the vast majority of people on the island. Out of this tradition, the Balinese people have discovered a way of life that would seem, at first, confusing to the average Westerner. For example, the cardinal directions of north, south, east, and west have been effectively replaced by a method of orientation that places Mount Agung, the sacred mother mountain of Bali, at the center of the universe. Villages, communities, and even individual homes reflect that paradigm, with the most sacred position of each lying in the direction known as Kaja, or mountainward. The opposite direction of Kaja is Kalod, towards the sea. Anything that is positioned in the direction of the sacred volcano, Agung, has been imbued with a sacred property. For example, the shrine of a family household would be at the most kaja position of the home, while the trash of that home would get dumped at the position closest to the ocean. It's a way of orienting the whole society in alignment with the Hindu concept of cosmic structure and organization. The microcosm of a household is a reflection of the macrocosm of the island itself, which is a microcosm of the entire universe. In this way, the Balinese have a sense of the totality in even the most mundane aspects of life. Every day and every action performed is a ritual of harmony and balance of cosmic forces. For the people of Bali, it is not merely a symbolic relationship, but rather it is the living, breathing reality which they are embedded within and from which they are inseparable. In tonight's sleep meditation, we will journey to the lush and tropical island of Bali. Spectacular cliffs, and rivers and waterfalls, white and black sand beaches, reefs, teeming oceans, terraced rice paddies, temples and volcanoes will appear on this journey, while the rich wisdom of the Balinese way of life brings insight and simplicity to your mind. The sacredness that resides in the simplest of actions reveals itself and carries you across the threshold of sleep to profound rest and relaxation. Allow yourself to become calm and steady. Take a deep breath and release the cares and worries of the day. Breathe in through your nose and breathe out through your mouth. Again, inhale through your nostrils and exhale through your mouth. Once more, breathe in. Breathe out. Take a moment to notice 
the subtle shift in how you feel when you bring a bit of conscious awareness to the breath. In Bali, each morning begins with a ritual offering of incense, a flower, a little water, a bit of fruit offered on a plate from a palm leaf. These offerings are made anew each day and offered with a prayer not only in temples and religious ceremonies, but in the shops and homes of the Balinese as a gift to their chosen deities. You see them on sidewalks and walls and tables. They are very meaningful. It is important not to step over them as this is seen as disrespectful. If you step over them by accident, it's polite to apologize. These gifts contain simple and natural components, but what is not seen in the offerings is another essential ingredient, a loving, pure heart. The offerings are made with sincerity and a sense of devotion. The ritual is an embodied act that expresses something about how the people of Bali see their work and their lives as a divine expression of love. They believe that this daily ritual will imbue whatever the day may bring with sacredness, humility, and awe. This is the insight that the ritual shows. So often, when life seems busy and stressful, and we see our work as a chore or a burden, we lose sight of the fact that there is ultimately something mysterious at the core of every small action. Life itself is a ritual offering of love. If we give ourselves sincerely to life, then no matter how simple or how humble our gift may be, it will be a beautiful expression of gratitude and love. These little palm leaf plates arranged precisely and beautifully with colored flowers and sweets and fragrant incense burning to the heavens are an affirmation that life is good and it is affirmed each morning with the dawn, fresh and new. Each day is a new lifetime and each morning is a rebirth. The daily ritual acts on the psyche of the Balinese and becomes woven into the fabric of the universe. Take a moment to give thanks for anything in your life that is good. Just acknowledging what is good in your life is an inner offering. The ritual that was just described at length is an outward expression of this inner feeling of gratitude for the good. Whatever you are able to identify as good in your life becomes your gift. It might be something as simple and natural as a flower 
or a cup of water placed delicately on a carefully folded palm leaf. Whatever you are grateful for, take a moment to acknowledge the goodness in your life with a sincere and pure heart. Feel your physical body resting in your bed. If you need to make any adjustments to your body, pillow, or blanket, feel free to make yourself as comfortable as possible, but make sure that you are aware of any movements. If possible, Once you have found a comfortable stillness, try to be still. Again, if you need to move, please feel free. But you should try to remain still without any strain. The mind is not as easy to keep still. The breath can help you to focus your mind. If the mind is focused on the flow of the breath, brain activity will shift into a deep state of relaxation. It may take time and practice, but as you develop, you will be able to smoothly transition from a state of active waking to a meditative and then sleeping state. Meditation gradually trains you to effortlessly allow your mental state to transform. Unless and until your meditation practice is established, it will be very easy for the mind to become restless and obscure the deep relaxation that is always available to you. Allow your mind to focus on the breath and to return to oneness and wholeness. Just breathe for some time.
The sacred volcano, Mount Tagung, is in the center of the universe in the Balinese cosmology. The center of the universe is the macrocosm for the microcosm of a human being. The center is the most essential place within the human being. It is the essence of your being. It is the intelligence of life itself. is the sacred meaning of the Mother Mountain. We embark on our journey to this center from the black sand beach of Uluwatu, renowned for the perfection of its waves. Locals believe that the surfers who have surfed the divine Uluwatu waves have been blessed by the gods. Even though, in the Balinese directions, toward the sea is not as sacred as mountain word, the sea itself is still a place of exceptional purity. See yourself lying on the beach. The sound of the ocean swells surrounds you. Lying with eyes closed, visualize your physical body lying peacefully, as though you were able to see your body from above. Hovering above your physical body is another body, the same size and shape as your physical body, but composed of light, translucent and featureless. This is your subtle body. From the perspective of your physical body, see this translucent form hovering about six feet above your physical body. Time and space have a different meaning for this subtle form. And you are able to fly above the terraced rice paddies and lush rainforests of the island. You presently arrive at an ancient and most sacred temple situated on the southern slope of Mount Agong. The temple is composed of huge stone pyramids that date back at least 2,000 years. The stepped terraces ascend mountainward to the most sacred inner sanctum of the temple, the Lotus Throne. See yourself moving steadily and calmly upward through the brick gateways. Each flight of stairs reveals a courtyard filled with thousands of tropical flowers amidst the lush surroundings. High pagodas, known as Meru, host the spirit of the ancestors. Each successive temple complex that leads to the lotus throne, moving upward toward the mountain, upward toward the most sacred aspect 
of yourself. has fallen and the stars look down from their celestial heights and shine on the peaceful temple courtyards. You come to the innermost seat of the temple. It is silent and still. There is a hum of reverence in the courtyard. The stones of the temple which have silently seen 2,000 years pass in the blink of an eye, welcome you with their wise and ancient presence. Go into the temple. silent meditation in the innermost sanctuary. The lotus throne is a symbol for the innermost sanctuary of your own heart. Each day, you move through your daily routine. This inner sanctuary is here, silent and calm at the center of your experience. You see the offering, the flower, the cup of water, the piece of fruit, the incense, and the small leaf wafting upward. Offer a moment of sincere gratitude for the gifts in your life with a pure, and loving heart.
you return to your physical body. You are lying here in your bed, totally relaxed. Allow your mind to remain in that inner sanctuary, in the silence of your own heart. Simple, pure, grateful, sleep, sleep.